good morning so we are discussing about the subject ec3552 vlsi and chip design so under this unit 1 is about mass transistor principles so so far we had discussed about all the topics now we are at the end of the unit 1 that is technology scaling and power consumption so in this particular video we are going to discuss about the technology scaling and power consumption in the mos transistors that is mos family it may be with the cmos also so okay how about the technology scaling and power consumption first we will see about the technology scaling so we know scaling is that is in order to build the high performance cmos circuits certain electrical design rules has to be considered that is they are to be taken into account electrical design rules has to be taken into account these rules are used to develop the mathematical model of the physical phenomenon occurring in the circuits as the current cmos fabrication process are improved and the device dimensions are shrinking these design rules will change hence as the device dimensions are changing the electrical parameters of the devices are also has to be scaled accordingly to apply the previously developed models to the current modern devices and circuits that is here we are going to increase the dimensions or maybe increasing or decreasing when the device dimensions are going to be changed they collect correspondingly what happens the electrical parameters of the devices are also has to be scaled accordingly now we are going to change the electrical parameters so technology scaling is nothing but we are going to change the electrical parameters then we have to apply after changing the electrical parameters we have to apply to the developed models and then to the current modern devices as well as to the circuits so since the fabrication process nowadays are improving so the dimensions are shrinking and so the de design rules are also to be changed so next in scaling of the bos devices the characteristics of the device are maintained and the basic operational characteristics are preserved but it has to be preserved we the uh, we have to maintain these are the main condition while doing scaling we should not touch the characteristics of the device as well as the operational characteristics both has to be preserved okay that is very important efforts are underway to make the transistors as small as possible to increase the speed and the circuit complexity per unit of chip area so that is our ultimate aim now we are shrinking the world nowadays we are bringing the, the total world in a very small chip so ultimately what we are interesting we are have to make the device as small as possible uh, billions and millions of transistors to be in one chip means how it is so okay it's a very magical only no so it's so wonderful so we are taking efforts to make the transistors as small as possible to increase the speed and we are going to make the circuit complexity per unit of chip area for this purpose we have to adjust the fabrication process and the bias voltage to allow the proper operation of reduced size devices now we have to adjust accordingly since we are aiming at a small size then we have to bias voltage also has to be adjusted so that the device can be operated properly so even in a reduced sizes devices the adjustments aim at achieving small dimension at the same time avoiding several side effects such as the smaller dimension effects such as the shrinking of a device without side effects is known as scaling so what are all the essential points to be noted under scaling while we are doing scaling the characteristics of the device that is the basic operational characteristics has to be maintained preserved we should not disturb that so only we can get the uh, scaling where that is reduced to uh, size without any side effects so what are all the advantages of doing scaling means the reduction in lateral dimensions of the mosfet and the interconnect size is known as scaling of the geometric dimensions of the mosfet the advantages of the scaling are as follows what are all the advantages 
improved current driving capability improves the device characteristics so when the driving capability improves then the device characteristics also improves due to small geometries the capacitance effects the effects of capacitance so that makes the time uh, speed of operation disturbs so but here we since we have smaller geometries the capacitance reduces improved interconnected technology reduces the rc delay so the delay automatically reduces since we have very smaller size the interconnections so the connections between the transistors will be improved na no? so that reduces the delay next fourth point the multiple threshold devices due to scaling adjust the active and standby power trade offs that we have to adjust compromise so if we want to have scaling that is to, uh, to be active means accordingly the power will be more so if you compromise either if you want to have active mode or power that you have to make the uh, adjustment compromise according to the applications next the integration density improves due to single chip devices all devices within a single chip so this improves the integration density next enhanced performance that is we what enhanced speed and power consumption automatically the cost of a chip also decreases by twice so because of all these factors we are going for scaling we are many uh, many of the factories or core companies are interested in doing this scaling process next what are all the drawbacks in doing scaling the power consumption per unit area increases power consumption per unit area per unit area la how much the power before scaling it is very less but now it is increases as the devices are scaled down that means scaled devices run increasingly hot this is a severe performance limitation for scaled devices so scaled devices means it is a reduced size having multiple chip uh, multiple ics in single chip so what happens so there will be a hot the temperature will be running more the scaling leads to mistakes of having scale proportionality to zero dimension or to zero threshold voltages this also leads to mistakes when we do this uh, dimension redu uh, reduction so there leads to some mistakes third point since scaling reduces the carrier mobility gain of the device also reduces gain also now reducing because mobility reduces because of smaller size the carrier mobility decreases so the device gain also reduces due to the reduction in the conductor size the current handling capacity of the device current handling capacity also reduces to solve this addition metal layers are necessary for more densely packed structure now the complication rises as the packing density per chip increases due to the high power density the device becomes very hot and needs forced cooling at the additional cost so cooling circuits added complexity next higher fields also cause hot electron and oxide reliability problems so these are all the drawbacks so one side we have packing density to be high it, that is the advantage but because of the higher packing density here the device needs to be cooled uh, immediately so the co cost of giving the cooling circuits makes the drawback other side so uh, everything has a positive as well as it includes the negative effect also but since we are considering the positive effects we can overcome this drawbacks how can we can do scaling so there are three methods to do the scaling procedure so one is constant voltage number two is constant field and third one is lateral scaling in constant voltage scaling we are keeping vdd as a constant and the process next we are first we have to keep the vdd to be constant and then the process of scaling is proceeded similarly in constant field scaling the device dimensions are scaled by the parameter lambda so here we are uh, scaled uh, by the parameter lambda so first we will see about constant field scaling in constant field scaling the scaled devices are obtained by scaling all dimensions of transistor device voltages 
and the doping concentration densities by a factor lambda. So, first we are going to see about the constant field. Constant field means here we are going to change the value factor of lambda. So, how, what are all the parameters? Accordingly, electrical parameters will be changed. So, here what are all the parameters are scaled? Okay, that is lambda. So, for what are all the parameters? Channel width, length L, channel width W, substrate doping N A, depletion layer thickness small d, gate delay tau P, load capacitance C L, supply voltage V, gate oxide thickness T ox, current I, current density J, transconductance G M, junction depth X J, static power dissipation P stat dynamic power dissipation p dynamic so from the table what we had understood it is all scaled by a factor lambda whether it is lambda or alpha we have taken a parameter the most important point in the scaling is the supply voltage is scaled but the electric field remains constant hence the same con name on the constant field scaling on the we have given name here it is not same it is name Next, we will see the constant voltage scaling. First, we will see about field. Uh, next, we are going to discuss about constant voltage scaling. Here, already I told no. So, the voltage is kept constant. That is, VDD is kept constant and the process is scaled. While the process started, PDD should be kept same. So, what are all the effects here? Here also the same parameters, channel length, junction depth, substrate doping, depletion layer thickness, transconductance, static power dissipation, dynamic power dissipation, current, gate delay, load capacitance, channel width W, supply voltage V, but here you see now supply voltage 1, so it is not scaled, okay, that is 1, gate oxide thickness T ox, current density J, so everything. All the parameters are scaled by the parameter alpha. With the constant voltage scaling, the electric field increases which has led to the development of the lateral double diffused structures. Next, we will see about the lateral scaling. In lateral scaling, only the gate length is scaled. Huh? Gate, uh, that length is scaled. This is also called gate shrinking. The effect of this scaling of parameters now we are going to see so here also we are say scaled by the parameters one but here the channel width is kept to be one okay junction depth one substrate doping one depletion layer thickness one supply voltage one gate oxide thickness one uh, rest all parameters are scaled by the parameters alpha okay after scaling now let us see about the power consumption in the CMOS that is MOS family what about the power consumption that is the major advantage because it consumes very low less power okay so that is the case why we are the world total world is uh, interestingly running behind MOS family because it consumes less power it eats very less hmm? if we have a elephant we become poor but here the CMOS means so it eats very less but generates high outputs so, power consumption components that is high frequencies impose a strict limit on the power consumption in the computer system that we know mm, the components are high frequencies which uh, this high frequencies it impose a strict limitations therefore power consumption of each device should be minimized so in the board we have so many devices so each device power consumption should be minimized Power calculations determine the power supply sizing, current requirements, cooling or heat sink requirements and the criteria for device selections. So, these are all the important criteria we have to uh, consider before selecting a device. We have to study how much this device is going to eat the power, mm, what are all the current requirements, uh, how much cooling uh, devices are needed if we select this device. All these have to be studied in depth. Power calculations also can determine the maximum reliable operating frequency. So, there are two components mainly in the power consumption. We have to consider two components. One is the static power consumption. Another one is the dynamic power consumption. 
so the cmos devices have very low static power consumption mm, already we studied the static power consumption will be very small which is the result of leakage current this power consumption occurs when all the inputs are held at some valid logic level and the circuit is not in charging states but when switching at a high frequency the dynamic power consumption can contribute significantly to the overall power consumption so we have two power consumption one is two components that is static power consumption another one is dynamic power consumption but in cmos devices static power consumption is low that is because of only leakage current small leakage current so low static consumption mm, so almost there is no leakage current also but during switching operations there will be a high dynamic power consumption next what are all the other factors uh, leading to the power consumption that is charging and discharging a capacitive load this also increases the dynamic power consumption this application report addresses power consumption in cmos logic families that is 5 volt and 3.3 volt and describes the methods for evaluating both static and dynamic power consumption so okay so when we st study about uh, two families for example 5 volt family is one 3.3 volt family is one then the methods will be different for static and dynamic power consumption also additional information needs to be presented that explain the causes of power consumption that also needs to be presented what are all the factors responsible for power consumption and present possible solutions we have to present solutions how can we minimize the power consumption in a cmos system so so far we have discussed about the technology scaling and power consumption in cmos or generally mos families so all the contents i used with uh, neil waste uh, for the first unit in generally and this is the text book prescribed for unit 1 and unit 4 in our syllabus thank you all